Uh, hello, all. Good day. I hope you're all doing good wherever you are and keeping safe. Uh, I'm Braha Dambar Srinivasan. I work at IBM as a support engineer for Linux and PowerBox uh, for internal test teams, uh, as well as distros and customers. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk about quality in Linux. Uh, this is a call for action on where we are currently uh, with the Linux kernel development and testing efforts and what some of the pain points are and uh, the need to improve overall quality of the Linux kernel. Um, I'm going to talk about current development and testing processes that we already have and what we can do better to ensure improvements in the quality of the, of the kernel. Uh, so let's try dive right in. Okay. Um, okay. The Linux kernel is fast and um, Add to that the complex, uh, complexity of the development community being so distributed, uh, quality seems to get compromised sometimes. Uh, it can, however, teach great lessons in terms of diversity and inclusion, um, but that would be a topic for another day. Uh, the, the Linux kernel project has grown over the years and become very big. Um, it's all possible because of a seamless set of standard processes followed across the entire kernel developers community. Uh, the, the kernel has over 27 million lines of code uh, with over 15,000 developers from across uh, 1,400 companies contributing to the Linux kernel since 2005. That is when we got JIT and so we can keep the metrics better. Um, every release has a short development cycle and thousands of commits and hundreds of thousands of lines of code gets into every release. Uh, as an example, we can see that in 2019, we had 75,000 lines of code coming into, uh, sorry, 75,000 code commits coming into the kernel, and, and that was the uh, least since, uh, lowest since 2013. And that gives an idea of how vast this, this project is. Um, let's look at the development process in a little more detail. Uh, it all starts with a patch or, or CD that series of patches in a patch set. There are thousands of contributors, uh, including people in academia, students, professionals in various industries, and definitely you and me. The process works on the concept of develop fast and release often policy, and every code change uh, is done through a patch. Uh, and a patch represents the smallest unit of code change that can fix a problem or introduce an enhancement or support new specifications or a feature or so on. Uh, and the patch is sent by the developer to the mailing list and gets reviewed by others on the mailing list, uh, as well as maintainers. Uh, and reviewers may not may or may not test a patch, uh, but the maintainers definitely have more responsibility. And so to ensure that the patches that they pick up uh, doesn't break anything, they, they definitely try to test uh, the patches that they pick up for the next release together but not individual patches. Uh, so after all the various rounds of reviews and uh, reworks uh, are through, the maintainer may choose to pick it up and pull it into the repo, uh, his repo. Uh, and if, if it is a feature, it get, it first gets to the Linux next repo where more builds and tests are conducted to ensure that it does not break any existing functionality. And then uh, the subsystem maintainers will choose to pull it uh, in to send it forward and on up to Linux OS 3. It goes through the hierarchy of maintainers. Uh, if it is a bug fix, it, it could get into the main line without getting into Linux next repo. And uh, the process is kept seamless by many maintainers, and there are hierarchies of maintainers too before the code gets into the NASA's tree. There are multiple subsystems too. Depending on the component of the of your proposed badge, you could end up interacting more with the first layer of maintainers than of that subsystem than than others in the open source development world. Um, we see that there are different ways uh, in which every uh, maintainer picks up 
comments, you know. Uh, uh, some might know the code so well that they get intuitive about uh, which patch would work or not and which wouldn't. And others may be strict lost to rules. Uh, so everyone would probably give you a different set of best practices that they follow and a different checklist that works for each of them. Uh, so, uh, and, and another amazing thing about this development process is the ability to add new features or enhancements or implement things without anyone really directing the development process. But then the question arises, do bugs that are breaking major functionality get work with the same urgency as some enhancement that a developer is really passionate about? I feel that the question answer to this is is no, uh, since everyone usually picks up what uh, they want to work on. Uh, the same sen sense of urgency felt for a bug would probably not be shared by everybody across uh, across the development uh, world. Uh, urgent bug fixes still need to follow the whole 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 cycle uh, of uh, a patch acceptance upstream before a, a distro will accept to pull it in. But with, the, with, with an open source development model, customers could patch their code themselves if they have the skills to do so, um, to work around critical problems. Or additionally, uh, we could have the Linux distributors uh, provide test fixes in a very short period of time uh, to mitigate the upstream process. Of course, the fix will not be considered final, uh, but it can get the customer unblocked and up and running again. So as you can see, it can take a while to get the patch into the upstream repo. Um, now, distros always choose to be at a lower uh, version than upstream to minimize risk. Uh, for that same reason, uh, unless a patch is upstream, distros will not pick it up uh, to backport it to the version that they are on. Uh, and each, uh, each distro selects uh, uh, a different version and adopts and co commercializes that version. And the distros take the, 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 the patches through their own downstream integration, their own regression testing, system integration testing, uh, security and performance tests. Uh, and, and, and the end users of Linux are most likely going to pick a distro version or one of the stable Linux versions to run their systems on. This is when they're going to actually hit a bug which got missed in, in all of this cycle to, to reaching them. And so this bug could be either breaking existing functionality or just failing to perform uh, 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 an intended function. These bugs get reported on various different boximas, and many are reported on kernel.org too. Uh, getting these resolved is as important as adding new features or enhancements. Uh, now, on a different aspect on bug resolution, uh, it would be great uh, to have a prescribed set of logs to be collected as part of first failure data capture, uh, FFTC process. For example, as part of the process improvements, my team was involved in defining these uh, to internal test teams at IBM. And we found a significant, uh, about approximately about 30% uh, decrease in requests for more information on bugs. And that helped us to get to resolving the bugs faster. Could we in the community help come up with a comprehensive list of logs as part of FFTC for every subcomponent? Uh, tools exist like uh, uh, SOS report or support config or a port, uh, which are all distro specific, uh, leaving upstream work with no standard tool to collect information. Uh, we need to either provide them as part of the kernel source uh, with the owner's permission, of course, or develop similar tools to ensure that all logs are captured at the time of the first instance of failure. Uh, so um, then there is the other side to the whole story. Uh, and that is the world of testing. Uh, and it's equally important or maybe more important. Uh, the kernel community 
claims active long-term support for a part six versions of kernel if i'm not wrong currently right now but those would probably be the best versions for the distros uh, the distros themselves support a lot of versions at any given point of time and would also merge or backport lots of different versions uh, sorry, different patches from newer versions of upstream kernel to support their wide customer base so there is this there is an ever increasing customer base of adopting linux each with varied requirements and configurations uh, with with varied preferences for different architectures um, and the architectures themselves would have uh, their own supported versions uh, and the way the kernel or the memory or storage is configured for each of them along with different application workloads that run on top of the os that matrix uh, of all that needs to be tested becomes very very complex add to that more more features are constantly coming in to the to the linux kernel uh, is just adding more to that complexity in in my opinion uh, the the testing is not happening uh, at the same fast pace that the development side is providing new code uh, the tester may pick up the latest kernel version to add test cases on and by the time the test cases are developed and pushed into a test suit uh, the upstream kernel level could be several commits ahead with more features and bug fixes added now ideally we would like testing to cover the following set of uh, testing to ensure every aspect of the kernel is, is tested uh, or, or so i think and this uh, probably is not a complete list so we want autom automated tests to ensure the comments coming in don't break kernel builds we want uh, to have uh, to add test coverage for all the thousands of new lines of code that's coming in every week uh, and, and and we want to test for regressions right that is and to ensure that existing functionality is not breaking the faster regressions are discovered the easier it is for the kernel community to fix and resolve the regression and we we want to ensure that every hardware on every supported linux or kernel version with the uh, you know, maybe even add on top of that enterprise uh, uh, software application workloads are all tested. That matrix is extremely, extremely complex. And, and we want, it, uh, want the kernel to be tested for performance and security too. Um, and we want to automate everything. And, uh, <laughs> and completing this list is like winning the lottery, extremely unlikely, right? Uh, we already do pretty well on the build tests. Uh, hardware companies do test Linux on their own products and the distros also test on most hardware. Uh, we can improve on code coverage and testing for regressions, um, performance and security. Uh, I will talk about that more in the next slide. Uh, so, so it's a given that not everything in that matrix we talked about gets covered. Uh, there is certain Currently, uh, no single test suit that covers it all either. Uh, and making sense of the testing aspects is not possible when we don't have all the information in one centralized place about what all testing is already happening. How can we solve a problem without knowing all the variables in it? With the distributed custom uh, contributor base, uh, it gets all the more difficult to ensure we are addressing this. So we see that it's an almost impossible metrics to test and not everything is going to be tested. So how can we help this situation? Uh, going back to the patch process, it is uh, expected or, uh, or it's an unspoken rule that some unit testing is done before sending a patch in. How many developers really follow this unspoken rule? Um, and there is uh, always going to be a small percentage of developers who would send in patches without enough testing done. 
uh, which could cause problems higher up in the process. Uh, we come to this conclusion because uh, we do hit build breaks and we do see progressions from time to time. And a lot of effort and time is put in to uh, uh, resolve these bugs. Uh, we need to put a check on it. Uh, we need to ensure that a patch does not get picked up by a maintainer when a list, uh, with, when a list of tests are not done on it. Uh, and we really need the maintainers to try and post this. Um, tests should be like uh, unit tests, build tests, sanity tests. You know, get, get, your, your kernel should not only build with your patch, but you should also boot into it. And, and some regression tests uh, are, should be run on the, at least on the subcomponent where the code is being changed, uh, at least on the hardware that they are developing on. Uh, and I think it would be a good idea to try to add those unit tests, develop them such that you could add it as part of the subtests for that subcomponent. Possibly uh, add other, one other option uh, would be to add a, a document with all the relevant test cases that can be, that could be run for testing that subsystem in a, in a file like called possibly a test me like a read me file for that subsystem similar to how we maintain a list of maintainers for that subsystem we could maintain a list of tests for that subsystem and then testers could jump in right and and and, and try and add their test suits and say hey i have added something for this uh, so you know it would it would try and get that information of what all testing is there for, for a particular subsystem and get it all into one place. That is, that is possible um, to me. That is possibly one solution that we could think of. Um, maintainers do hold uh, developers responsible to fix any bugs that their patches might cause. So why not hold them responsible to ensure quality and do their bit of the testing? and avoid many of those initial bugs and save the corresponding time and effort that goes in, you know, fixing them. Uh, we need uh, also to find better ways to you know, hit regressions, find those regression bugs as early as possible uh, in the development cycle, ideally before the patch is sent out to the mailing list or at least before it makes it to the main line. Um, we need to simplify and automate existing test suits that can uh, be set up and run easily to, so that we can ensure that more people would be open to test as they develop. Uh, and, and ensure that when new functionality gets added to the kernel, we also have a way to test it. Uh, one suggestion would be to add the, you know, again, build, build uh, or develop the unit test cases such that it can go into the self-tests or, or, or add it to a regression test suit. Another possibility would be to start um, discussions on the mailing list uh, to get others to get add relevant tests uh, to the subsystem for a, a feature that you're, you're working on. Uh, I'm not saying we're not doing enough testing. Uh, I just feel we could leverage more across the community uh, to do better with the testing that we already are doing. Uh, so let's see what is currently out there. Uh, we have automated build tests uh, run internally in many companies like Intel, Red Hat, and others. Uh, a lot of effort has already gone into the creation of these complex test suits, and uh, but is mostly private to these companies, and hence unavailable for the rest of the community to pick up, or add more to it, or make it better. Uh, so, can we leverage the existing tests to ensure the code builds on all platforms? It would be good to have that. Um, there, are, there are efforts for testing of performance and security aspects too, but again, most of it is probably internal to many companies and uh, the results are published to the larger community. Uh, one starting point towards opening things up is if we could ensure that these test results are published and if we could get to open, make those test suits open source and uh, more people can contribute towards making this performance and security testing more robust and uh, help add more automation to. Uh, it 
might be possible to add automated testing capabilities uh, to pull in only rele um, relevant tests just for the files or subsystem that the patch is touching. Uh, or we can add automation to, uh, you know, uh, uh, run specific kernel unit tests or self-tests, um, check for test, uh, test coverage of the, of the code and more. Uh, but since a lot of this testing is private uh, or at least unknown or, or not so well known in the, in the community, um, some of this testing starts becoming redundant and, and there is duplication of effort. Um, if most of the tests are being done internally, that may mean that most companies are doing similar testing, uh, but are unaware of each other's results. So it, it would be a good thing to create a synergy around such testing efforts. Um, and then we do have the LTP, the Linux test project. Uh, this is probably the one test suite that sees a lot of contributions and, and, and can be run for comprehensive kernel testing. But this doesn't test everything. I have seen that this test suite doesn't have tests for all subsystems. And it's also complex. Uh, and, and, uh, and usually developers aren't going to run this to test their code. So we see the need for other test suits like XFS tests, which is specific to testing file systems, or um, maybe even BLK test suit that is specific for block IO related tests and other similar test repos that are all spread out over the community. And to consolidate all the, all the, all the test cases for specific subcomponents, we see similar repositories. Um, we also have fuzzing projects that are happening and fuzzing is a very powerful testing technique. Uh, and, and, um, and the intention is to find uh, bugs very fast with, with a um, semi-random import or something. And, and uh, fuzzing is especially useful in finding memory corruption bugs, uh, but fuzzing also finds some a lot of false positives and fuzzing throws out a lot of bugs too. And so it, it, it gets difficult to determine valid bugs in, in, in all of that, among all of those bugs uh, when, when we find it through fuzzing. Um, there, there are also projects like the Linux Foundation's Kernel CI project that uh, help test building and booting uh, the master tree uh, the stable, stable tree and some maintainers uh, subtrees on various architectures. They also are working towards consolidating testing initiatives. And, and this is one place we could definitely think of collaborating on and use it as a central forum to list out all uh, existing tool, tool, test tools that we already have. And we could also have, have conversations going on on what we can do better. Um, but we don't have a comprehensive list of what all test use are there and what all testing is happening. Not in one place. We, we need to get it in, all in one place to decide how we are doing on the testing side. Not every test effort is known to others, uh, looking for something similar. And then that's why we are here having discussing this whole topic. Um, there is the issue of test cases too, right? How do we collaborate more on common test cases? We do need to need a way to ensure there are projects that would help bring in more contributions from testers into one place and also help avoid redundant test case development efforts. Um, a more open discussion on what is being tested and what the results are uh, would help clarify a lot of the current haze around the Linux testing. So can we start those discussions on a central mailing list where testing can be discussed more openly? Um, and then, uh, there, then there is also the need to ensure that workloads for large enterprise customers run fine on Linux. Uh, these customers are large and complex. Uh, they run large and uh, very complex business workloads and, and, and cannot have downtimes as it would impact uh, critical applications and transactions for a large number of people. 
so they expect stability and support. Uh, and there are different workloads that distros spend a lot of effort to certify on their their kernel versions uh, on different hardware platforms. And uh, th there is a bigger challenge of machine access for large machines or large configurations. We need to actively have companies that produce hardware. And yes, I'm including my own company here to contribute and collaborate freely with their systems. We, when they need the software, they shouldn't expect the community to help provide software with no access to the hardware. Uh, there has to be a lot of collaboration for everyone to contribute and to make Linux better. So to summarize the problems, there are gaps in current testing by developers, probably unit testing and sanity testing, and, and, and maybe even some more regression testing that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there are gaps in system uh, testing, like integrated systems testing, performance testing, security testing. Um, and there are overlaps in testing, uh, both in test efforts and 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 in test case development efforts, there is a duplication of, of effort all across. And these are the problems. So what can we do to address these gaps? Um, we should address the gaps in current testing by developers by enforcing early testing in the development cycle and, and the maintainers need to take a call here. Uh, we should address the gaps in uh, system testing by simplifying uh, usage of complex test suits, uh, list out tests for subsystems, uh, get get uh, testers to add, uh, you know, add to the list of what test suits they have developed on, uh, add tests for new functionality closer to the development cycle as close as possible to the development cycle. So as soon as your, your code gets into the, into, the, into the repo, there are test cases waiting to, to start testing it. And uh, we should address the overlaps in testing by creating synergy and collaboration between developers, testers, distros, and, and end user companies, uh, and consolidate all testing efforts. Um, we should ensure that like the development cycle, Testing also should be streamlined to follow a standard procedure template and publish testing repositories as well as results in a centralized place so everyone knows where to go find testing tools and results. So in conclusion, uh, the developers, testers, distributors, uh, um, companies selling hardware for Linux and companies using Linux are all in this together. Uh, quality of Linux is the responsibility of everyone involved in it and using it. Uh, and we can ensure better quality if we collaborate better. And hopefully this would be the beginning of those important conversations that we should be having. That's all I had for the topic itself. Uh, I've thrown in some uh, references here that caught my eye while I was preparing for this talk. And 